All right. Yeah, let's all remain in a prayerful attitude. Let's read from Psalms 139. We'll be reading from Psalms, uh, from verse number one through verse number 15. Seth Younger will be screen sharing it. All right. So Psalms 139, verse one. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You, compre you comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high I cannot attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide for, from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Amen. Praise Lord, I thank and praise my God for giving me this wonderful time and opportunity to stand before you all and uh, speak from the word. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of scared, but still. All right, so I'm not going to speak from each and every verse from this uh, chapter because I know like it's a very familiar chapter to all of us. We have, uh, what you say, we have heard a lot of messages from this chapter. It's written by David and it's a song of David in which he talks about uh, how God is omniscient, omnipotent and omnipresent, like how God is everywhere, all knowing and all powerful. So that's how the whole chapter goes. But then while I was reading a few weeks back, while I was reading this chapter, there was one thing that the Lord spoke to me, which like really touched my heart. That was like that one thing I felt like it is very uh, relatable to all of us. Like there, uh, there was situations where we faced that uh, problem in our lives. So I just thought like I would speak from that. Uh, as I was preparing for this, I also got a story in my mind, which I read a few more weeks back up before that. So I, it's a very short story. I just uh, share that. With, I just narrate that with you all. Okay, so the story's title is The Devil and the Duck. So uh, in the story, there's a boy named John. He's 10 years old and he has an older sister named Leah, who is 12 years old. So they both have a grandma who stays pretty far away from the city and uh, she owns a farm. And uh, in the farm, she does all the crop, uh, like fielding work and uh, she rears animals and all that. So it's a very beautiful uh, place far away from the city, nature and all that. So these two kids love going to the grandma's uh, farm and staying there and spending their vacation over there. So in one of their vacation, both of them went there. And while they were spending their time over there, uh, I might tell the story pretty fast because we don't have time. <laughs> so when they're uh, staying there and spending time with their grandma, their grandma gave uh, John a slingshot. I believe most of you know what a slingshot is. It's that Y-shaped thing that most of us used to play with that when we were small, like we target things and play with that. So, you know, boys love all these toys. So he, he was really excited to get that slingshot. So in the morning, next day in the morning, he took the slingshot, went out and he just, uh, in the farm, he was just standing and he targeted a tree and he was just trying to uh, hit the tree with the slingshot. From morning till afternoon, he kept on trying to hit the tree with the slingshot but not even once, like not even at one point, he was able to hit the tree with the slingshot. And obviously he was too disappointed with that. He was depressed and he was sad, like because not even once he hit the tree. Uh, and it was afternoon, it was time for lunch. So he started heading back to his grandma's house. So as he was walking back to the house, near his house, his grandma's house, he saw a duck over there. So, you know, he was a small kid, like 10 year old. He was too tempted to use the slingshot on the duck. Like, but what he thought was like, all this while I've been trying to hit the tree, the huge tree with the slingshot, but it never hit. So if I tried on the duck, I'm sure that it's not going to hit the duck. So he was just too tempted. And then he took, the, took out the slingshot and tried the slingshot on the duck. 
and to his surprise, the slingshot hit the duck on the neck and the duck died. He was completely terrified and he just freaked out. He was scared because that duck was one of his grandma's favorite duck. That's why he used to roam around the house like that. So he was scared if his grandmother is going to scold him. So what he did, he just looked around if there's, any, if there's anything that he could do. So there was a pile of wood near him. So what he did, he, do, he took the uh, dead duck and he did it among the wooden piles. Uh, so that no one notices it and he doesn't get uh, scolded for that. So after he hid it among the wooden pile, he just looked around it to check if someone was looking at him. And he was really scared to see his sister. Leah was standing far away near the house and she was watching everything happen. She saw him kill the duck and hiding it in the wooden pile, everything. So now he was more scared because he knew that his sister loved putting him in trouble. So he was really more scared. And... But to his surprise, his sister didn't tell him and didn't speak a single word. She kept silent and she walked into the house. And so he was more scared at that situation. But then anyways, he walked into the house. They both sat for dinner, like all the three of them, his grandma and his sister and him sat for the lunch. And they had lunch. Even during lunch, his sister was staying silent. But anyways, they had lunch. And after lunch, soon after lunch, their grandmother told Leah to go wash the plates. That's when Leah smiled and looked at John and told See, Grandma John told that he will wash the plates today. John was a little bit confused. Why is my sister telling me to wash the plates? Because that's her job every day. But then that's when like Leah walked to John and whispered in his ear, telling, do you remember the duck? By then he understood what was happening. He understood that his sister was trying to blackmail him by like, if he doesn't do that, she's going to tell her that grandmother that what he did. So by then he was understanding what the situation that was going on there. <laughs> and he was scared and at last he agreed to it and he washed the plates. This happened the next day also. They both wanted to go for fishing, but then their grandmother asked Leah to stay back to help with some kitchen work. But then the same thing happened. She made John do it. And John did it only because to escape from the trouble that he's going to get into. And this carried on for a long days, like day after day, every day, John had to do both his job and what his uh, sister's job was. Both he had to do. And at one point, he was completely out of his, like, he was out of his mind. Like, he didn't, he didn't want to do it again, like, anymore. And he didn't know what to do. So he was really sad, sad. And he just took all his courage and went to his grandma to the kitchen. And then he started to cry. And then his grandmother was like, what's happening? Why are you crying? So he was like, he confessed everything. He told her what happened. He told her that he killed the duck. He told her that he hit the duck in the wooden pile. And he told her that, that is why Leah was blackmailing me for these things and all these things. He just told everything from the first to last. He confessed everything. But what happened there was that his grandmother just smiled and just, she just kneeled down and hugged him and comforted him and told, see my son, I knew what you were doing. Like I, when you were killing the duck, when everything was happening, I was there at that situation. I was there in the house watching through the window. I saw you kill the duck. I saw you hide it in the wooden pile. I saw Leah noticing that everything I saw but the only thing why I was not angry on you was that I was waiting for you to come and confess it with your own mouth to me. Like even when you came inside the house, I was surprised that you didn't tell me what happened. You just kept silent and that's why Leah was taking advantage of you. So she just told that and he comforted her. Now you all might be thinking like, why am I telling this story to you all? Because this is so much relevant to what I'm going to say right now. Because this, chap this chapter completely talks about how God knows us. Like if you read from verses 7 onwards, it keeps on telling about where, like David tells, like, if I go and it says in uh, verse 7, it says, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? David himself, he says, like, there's no place in the world or in the universe or anywhere where I can flee from your presence or from your spirit. It says, like, uh, in verse 9, it says, if I go to heaven, you are there. If I go to hell, you are there. If I go to the mountains or the seas, wherever I go, you are there. And I think in verse 12, it says, the darkness and light are both alike to you. Like even if I stand in darkness or go and stand in light, both is alike to you. You can see me everywhere. Like that's what uh, the remaining uh, verses also says. Like the God knows what you do from the first to the end. He was, he's, he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Like he was there even before we were born. Like we are all the chosen generation. He knows like whatever we have done in every millisecond of our lives. So that's what this, these verses say. But, but what I was trying to uh, tell, like the thought that I was trying to convey through these words is that how Satan tries to control our lives by, telling, by putting our past in front of us. Like you saw in the story, John did something and Leah was trying, trying to take advantage of that by showing him the past, like by blackmailing him through his past. Like 
but that was the, if you look at um, like we all know that once in our life we were all sinners we were all sinners once in our life we were never perfect we were all sinners once in our life like when jason uncle was taking the youth class also he was telling about the types of sins uh, original sin and actual sin even when uh, my dad was take, uh, speaking from the word a few weeks back he was telling about that actual sin and original sin original sin is the one uh, that's already within us when we were born like that was already uh, that's the like the adamic sin from that time and then actual sin is the one that we commit in our day to day lives so the, we were all born in sin we were all we have all committed sin at, at least once once in our life like multiple times so those were all our past but the one, like i believe like most of you who are listening to me right now have accepted jesus as your personal savior and has come to faith we have all received that redemption from those all sins but what satan does is to try to depress us from our spiritual life is like he will put all those past in front of us it might be like we cheated someone or the words that came out of my our mind in our uh, our mouth in our past or the places where we went how we spoke with people the the actions Uh, or us lying to someone, maybe multiple things, like all lot of things, and then Satan just puts that in our face, and he he'll be like, see you you did this in your past, and this is what defines you. You are this person even now. That's what Satan says. Like he he tries to confuse us. Like even after we have come to the faith, even after we read we got the redemption from our sin, he puts our past in front of us and tries to confuse us. That's what most of the time Satan does because if he gets us confused. like you know that's it depresses our spiritual life so he tries to confuse us but at that but when i was reading through these verses and all that i found like i just i was just reading and there are so many verses in the bible which gives you a solution to that like you don't need to go anywhere else to find a solution to that the bible itself gives you the solution like if you go to verse uh, if you go to first uh, john chapter 1 verse 9 it says but if we confess our sins to him he is faithful and just to forgive us for forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our wickedness the bible itself clearly says that if we are ready to confess our sins to him if we are ready to confess our sins to god then he is he is faithful that's what the bible says he is faithful and just he is faithful and just he 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 uh, what do you say he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our, all our wickedness so we know that verse most of us know that verse that god will uh, cleanse us from our sins uh, if we are ready to confess like how in the story but what satan tries to confess us by telling is like we are still that same old person like you have once committed that sin that's a part of your life that's what satan tries to say and tries to depress our spiritual life but then when i was just reading um, oh that's what satan tries to say but as i was reading the bible one thing i noticed like most of you might be knowing that verse it says the god and the lord that we worship is a god who not only for, forgives our sins but also forgets our sins that's what the bible says he not only forgives our sins but also forgets our sins it does, like forget in the sense not in literal sense that god has a memory loss issue or something like that not like that what he tries to say is that he forgets our sins is that he will not judge us on that sin again after after that point once he forgives your sin that is no longer a part of your sin we are all in you we turn into a new person after that that those sin doesn't have any control over our lives those are all dead sin those are those are all taken away and god has cleansed us from that so that's what the bible says once god forgives you from those sins those sins the those the sins doesn't have any control over your life but what satan tries to do it we know that god has forgotten that sin god himself is telling that he has for um it is told by god himself like if you look at the verse it says um in hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 it says uh yeah it's in hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 it says and i will forgive their wickedness and i will remember and i will never again remember their sins god himself has told that that i will forgive their wickedness and i will never again remember their sins that's what he tells so god himself has forgiven and he has forgotten that sin for us and there's no requirement for us now or necessity for us now to look at that past and think about all those sins and be like and judge ourselves with those sins god has told himself that i would not judge you on that sin and but what satan tries to lie is that he brings that all in our mind it's not necessary that it comes to our mind maybe you might meet your old friend like maybe your friend at your workplace 
or maybe your friend at your college or school or anywhere like one fine day you meet them and they're like dude do you remember what you did when you were in school do you remember you went to these places the language that you spoke and all those things they might say and it might hit your mind and be like i used to do all these things right and it might like what you say it might try satan might try to confuse you and to depress you in your spiritual life by making you remember all those things but what the bible says what god tells to us through the bible is that i have forgiven that sin and i have forgotten that sin for you and there is no necessity for us to remember those past sins of ours because we are a new person right now uh, and when the when i was preparing this message as just one more verse i want to mention which like really encouraged me like which made me really happy like it was um, john chapter 8 verses 34 through 36 it says this is how the verse starts jesus answered them truly truly i say to you everyone who commits a uh, sin is a slave of sin that's what the verse starts everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin but as the verse continues it says the slave does not remain in the house forever god him jesus himself says that the slave does not remain in the house forever but the son does remain forever the son the slave does not remain in the house forever but the son does remain in the house forever so if the son makes you free you will be free indeed and the son has made us free and we are free indeed like that we might like uh, the bible itself says that a slave like even maybe some of you are listening to me right now maybe it might we might be slaves of sin but what the bible says is that if you the slave does not stay in the house forever we have an opportunity to come outside that house we can come out of the house what the bible says that jesus has shed his blood on the cross of calvary to save us and if we accept him as our personal savior we are redeemed and after that we are all children of god and we stay in the house forever nobody can take us out of the house after that we are in the house forever after that but if we are slaves of sin it's we can come out of that sin like if we accept jesus as our personal savior then the lord saves us and then we can come out of that sin that's what that's what really made me happy when i was read, just reading this like the last part where it says a slave stays does not stay in the house forever but the son stays in the house forever that's what like that's what he says like even if you look at the old testament the prodigal son the son went away far away from the from uh, from his father but when he came back god was ready to accept him back that's how it says that's how the bible there's so many verses and incidents in the bible that explains this verses that's what like when i was reading this it really encouraged me how it was telling that the son remains in the house forever like maybe in our day to day life we might even after we commit uh, to the salvation we might commit uh, sins in our lives like knowingly or unknowingly but but what the bible says in this verse itself it keeps us from uh, verses 7 onwards it says i know what you do i know what's happening in your life from first to last even after you took the salvation of after redemption if you commit a sin knowingly or unknowingly i know what you're doing god knows everything that we do it's just that god is waiting for us to come back like how it's told in first john 1 verse 9 if you are uh, but if you confess your sins to him and come back i am ready to accept him that's what the bible says to all of us that like all these explanations are in the bible itself all these verses are interconnected to each other god himself tells if you are ready to come back i am ready to accept you but what satan tries to do is a confuse you he is going to put your past in front of you and be like this is your path past you were never you are how you sure that you're worthy of where you are right now all those things but you should know one thing like when i was preparing i was just thinking over this and i was like it is true that my past makes me not worthy of what i am right now it never makes me worthy of what i am right now my past but but right now we are far worthy than we can imagine because we what the bible says is that we are all children of god if we are children of god we are far more worthy than we were in the past in the past we were not worthy that's true but satan what he tries to do is that he tries to put our past in our friend and tries to tell that even now you are not that worthy but the truth is that now we are far more worthy only because god saved us so uh, that's what i wanted to tell like that's what the thought i got from this uh, i know that i didn't cover all the verses but this was the two main points that i wanted to share like when satan tries to put our past in front of you and tries to judge us remember one thing what god told that i will not judge you on your past that's what the god that what that's what god has told us that he will not judge us on our past because he has forgotten that only for us because he loves us so by this i would like to conclude my message i don't think i took a lot of time i might <laughs> okay anyways god bless you all uh, 
and uh, yeah, God bless you all. Amen.